Rub up your engines! It's come to my attention that people say I'm getting too wild and with the thumbnails and I'm getting too sensationalist. Well, you know, I have to, because let's face it, a lot of times people today, they don't want to learn anything and they think, oh, cars, it's boring, right? I found that if I make sensational titles and pictures, but continue to be making the same excellent videos that give you advice on how either to save money by not buying the wrong car or by learning how to fix the car yourself or by showing you tools that you can get at a decent price that'll help you fix your own car. Let's face it, Americans, maybe they don't want to learn too much, but if I can sneak in some knowledge that not only saves them money, helps them fix their own car, and gives them the best advice in the world on which junker cars not to buy so you don't get one of those endless money pits that people are often building these days that you get stuck with, I'll continue making these sense sensational titles because I'm still giving the same advice. I'm just giving titles so more people watch these videos so they can learn something that's really useful for them. It's not like I'm making some crazy title. I'm having some goofy video. I'm giving you the same information I always had from my 52 years experience of fixing cars. I'm just packaging a little bit different. So <laughs> I want more people to get this information. You know, you can share information. There's lots of guys out there sharing very good information on repairing cars and stuff but they're small little groups and they're nitpicking here and there. I'm here for the general public to help everyone out and in an honest fashion where you notice there's no emblems flashing all over the place and advertisements for companies. No, I'm telling you the actual truth and make titles that grab your attention so then you can learn something. The more the better as far as I'm concerned and you should be happy too because I'm still giving you the same great information. It's just in a slightly different package that's going to grab your imagination more. All the changes in cars and seeing is this good, is that bad, and of course a good title and a good thumbnail is going to get your attention and then you can learn something. Like earlier when I was talking about those variable compression engines and Infiniti's selling one now. Horrible idea. Too much technology. Nissans and Infinities have engine problems anyways. You're making a piston that instead of going up and down on a connecting rod that connects to the crank has all kinds of pivots and levels and has a motor that controls all that stuff's going to break. You buy one of those cars and it breaks, you're going to be thousands and thousands of dollars in a hole. So I warn people against this new technology when I see it's bad. But when it's good technology, hey, I talk about that too. Boy, GM's really digging out of the bottom of the barrel now. They're circulating a petition here in Texas and they want the state of Texas to call the Chevy Suburban the national vehicle of Texas. Well, first of all, how can you call it a national vehicle when it's a state? So right there. They're showing their lack of education. Back in 1986, Texas Monthly called the Suburban the national vehicle of Texas. But then again, that was back in 1986 when they made decent vehicles. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, the new Suburbans, pfft. I have customers that still here in Texas have some of those old ones from the 80s and early 90s. They're still rolling strong. They're gas hogs. and Yeah, you got to replace the rear ends and the transmissions every once in a while, but they were solid built. The new ones, Phew, they're cookie cutters compared to those old ones. I don't think any real Texan would want them to vote it in as the national vehicle of Texas now. Now you must take a note that the all new Suburban is going to be made in Arlington, Texas, in Texas. So they're pulling kind of a political move here too, that they can try to push the legislature to put that in because oh, they got a big plant here where they're making them all. But as of today, only 352 people have signed the petition and I suppose they all work for sure. Chevrolet too. So GM's going to a new low now to try to get some free PR <laughs> to call themselves the official national vehicle of Texas. <laughs> All form and no function. Typical of GM, you know, they get a name, something out there, and not actually in building the best vehicles. Just say that they are. <laughs> Here's one for you Camry fans. 2020 Toyota Camry is offering all wheel drive again. So if you want a Camry, but you want to be driving in the deep snow, you can now buy a 2020 Camry that has all wheel drive on it. It hasn't been since 1991 that you get a Camry that has all wheel drive in it. All wheel drive really handle 
better in amounts. There's no arguing that. I rented an all-wheel drive years ago when we went to visit Yosemite in January. And it was icy and snowy, and I thought, boy, I just rented the car. We flew in at night. It was dark, and I just got a car rental. Whatever keys they gave me, I jumped in and drove it. It happened to be a four-wheel drive Saturn SUV. In the mountains, it handled really well. So I thought, huh. So I looked under the car with a flashlight when I got out. And it was all-wheel drive. Really made a difference. Now this all-wheel drive system presently is only going to be available in a four-cylinder engine. They haven't hooked it up with the V6 with all that extra power, which is probably a smart thing because if you're driving all-wheel drive, you don't want to have insane power and make things start to slip. If you've got a reasonable amount of power, and those four bangers put up plenty enough horsepower, but unfortunately, <laughs> at least for this winter, these 2020 Camrys with this all-wheel drive aren't going to be available till the spring of 2020. Hey, this should have gotten a little bit better. And have it come out in the fall or the winter, not in the spring. <laughs> <laughs> they probably would have sold more that way. There's a shocker for you in the United States today. More people are buying new electric cars than they are manual transmission cars. 1.9% of the new car buyers are buying electric cars, but only 1.1% are buying brand new manual transmission cars. And of course, some of this has to do, you don't have a choice. Take that new mid-engine Corvette, it only comes with an automatic transmission. A lot of guys would want one in a standard, but they're not even making them, so you don't have that much of a choice. And of course, they're trying to push electric cars. You're still talking about a spit in the bucket when it comes to all the cars that are actually being sold, but it's kind of interesting that it's flipped, because it used to be the other way around. It used to be that 1.9% were manual, less than 1% were electric cars, but the electric cars are going up a little bit. And like I said, some of it has to do with just what's available out there. It used to be the Econo box cars like Fiesta, the real cheap little cars. People would buy them with a standard transmission. They cost less and they got a little bit better gas mileage. But now in the United States, they don't even offer standard transmissions in most of the cars. So you don't have a choice to buy one. If you think that out of, you know, 100% of the people buying cars, 1.9% are buying electric cars. That still is a very small proportion of people. There's one for you only in Japan. Turns out now there's a a bunch of people in Japan who are buying cars, but they're not even driving around themselves. They have a bunch of car sharing apps. People buy a car, park it on the street, and then you get your phone out. If you're a member of the car app where you share them, you can go share the car. And be in Japan, some crazy stuff is being done. People are renting a car, they're driving to get lunch, driving it back, but some people are actually renting the cars and taking naps in them. <laughs> If you've ever seen those uh, Japanese cubicles where a lot of businessmen, they don't want to take the train all the way home. So they rent one of these tiny little cubicles. I mean, if you're claustrophobic, you wouldn't want to sit in one. So I guess an alternative to that is when it's a nice day, you can rent one of these cars and take a nap in the thing. <laughs> and if you do take a nap in one of these apps, it's only $4 for every half hour you have. So you stay there for an hour, cost you eight bucks for your nap. And of course, people are renting vans and stuff. They want to pick something up. I buy a van. There's one there. You can rent it. Move your stuff, put it back. The Japanese, some of them are even using it to practice karaoke in. And the people who own the vehicles, they might not even drive them at all. They just put them out there and it's like a little business experience for them. And some of the people, they're renting them for a lunch hour. They're eating their lunch in the car and they have it delivered to the car while they're working. Stranger than fiction what the Japanese are doing with their cars. <laughs> Junior is here, says Scotty, my Toyota Corolla S 2013 started and an idle, and when you put it in drive with a brake on, it stays at 1100 RPM. Okay, that's too high. The throttles do get dirty, and you need to clean them every once in a while. You can watch my video, Make Your Car Run Better with a Little Spray Cleaner. And there's two different cans that you can buy, and it'll cost you about 13, 14 bucks for the two cans combined. Watch the video and take off the duct, do it exactly as I show to clean it, and then put it back together. Now, once you do that, sometimes it'll idle a little funky for a day or two or three because the computer has to reset the idle itself, and it might act a little bit weird for two or three days. But if you drive it around seriously and you get all the carbon off and it's not sticking anymore, odds are it'll go right back to normal. Just do it exactly as I do in the video so you don't make any mistakes. Oh, there's a rumbling. What the hell is that rumbling? So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.